Hi friends, welcome to Cooking with Nditi. First and foremost, I wanna say thank you to all of my new 200 plus, I think it's 203 to be exact, new friends who have joined the Cooking with Nditi family. I appreciate you for stopping by and just celebrating your time here with me. So thank you. For my friends who have been with me for a while, mm, 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 kisses, you guys mean so much to me. You have no idea how much. I started this channel so that I can leave a legacy for my children and my late twin brother's children so that hopefully 50 plus years down the road when I'm gone and they're thinking of something that I used to make for them or my mom, that they can go to YouTube and find that recipe. So welcome to my family. Today I'm gonna to do something really special. I'm going to make a sweet potato pie. It's getting close to Thanksgiving and that is a staple on the Thanksgiving table in the African-American community is sweet potato pie. Now, unfortunately, my mom didn't leave her recipe. She was very protective of it. She used to say, oh, just a little sugar, a little cinnamon, a little butter, a little nutmeg, and that's about it. But she didn't give me the specifics. So I'm gonna play around with it today and try and recreate her pie as close to her pie as I can. So, ready to get in the kitchen and bake a sweet potato pie with me? All right, let's go. Okay. Here are the ingredients that you will need to bake two sweet potato pies. Um, when I was smaller, I saw my mom peel her potatoes first and she cut them. Oops, no, she, we um, turned them long ways to prevent having a bunch of strings in your potatoes. As you can see, I'm having a hard time with this. Um, cut them long way and you should see fewer strings when you get ready to mix it. All right, wash them and then put them in a pot of water and let them boil for about an hour. And I just grabbed um, a store brand pie shell uh, deep dish. You wanna prick holes in it along the bottom and the side with the fork and that's supposed to help prevent your crust from puckering up with bubbles. And yes, I could have made homemade crust, but mm, who has time for that now, right? All right, cut out a piece of parchment paper to put in the bottom of your pie shell. And you ever seen those beans at the dollar store that takes forever to get softened? Well, I stopped trying to cook those, so I use them as pie weights. And put them in the bottom, bake them on 400 for 10 minutes, just so my crust isn't gooey and raw. Once you pull it out of the oven, go on and cover um, the edges of your pie shell. And that's going to prevent your pie shell from getting uh, burnt along the edges. Because now it's time for us to go in and take the beans and this parchment paper out. And it's a little gooey on the bottom, so I did put it back in the oven for about three to five more minutes. All right, my potatoes are tender. I'm adding one stick of butter to my pot because my pot is still hot. It's going to let it melt while I get the pie out. And now my butter is all melted. I'm going to add in my white sugar, my brown sugar, and about a half a tablespoon of vanilla flavoring. Now, I did see my mom squeeze um, oranges in her pie and lemon. All right, I took my whisk and I mixed the sugars and butter with the citrus juice together. I added some cinnamon, a little nutmeg, a little allspice, about a fourth of a teaspoon of allspice. Take your whisk and mix, mix it in. And our secret ingredient, we did use a little bit of pumpkin pie spice.
All right, I'm going to add one cup of canned milk. Take your potato masher and you want to mash your sweet potatoes down. Get as many as the big lumps out of it as you can. So I, I mash it down and twist it. Now some people will go in and put put it in a food processor. My mom didn't have one at the time, so I'm not going to use that. She did use a hand mixer, except her beaters were metal. So we will see a lot of the um, strings on them before she start cutting the potatoes in half. All right, I'm mixing. And because I cut my potato long ways, I don't see a lot of strings in here. All right. See, very little on those beaters. Now I'm going to go in and add the milk to my sugar and butter mixture. And I'm probably doing it differently from how your family did it. They probably added all of this into the potatoes first. Um, sometimes I just do things differently. Remember, I'm not a pro. I'm just doing what works for my house. And because I can see the sugar and the butter kind of had a little funky texture to it, I'm going to heat it up to caramelize it a little bit over the stove on medium until it's nice and smooth. Taking a whisk and stirring it. And I did this for about five minutes till all of the sugar and milk was dissolved together. All right now I'm pouring that milk and sugar mixture over my cream potatoes and I'm stirring them. I'm going to beat them a little more. And it already smells good. I could actually eat this as pudding. I did put a pinch of salt because I use unsalted butters. Now I'm going to take a little bit more sugar, add it with a little bit of milk so that it's a cool temperature and whisk in my eggs in my cup. And like I said, I just do things a little differently. It's probably unorthodox from what you've seen with your family. All right, my eggs are well blended into my milk and sugar. Now I'm going to stir it in to my potatoes. And I did that first so they wouldn't splatter all over the kitchen. Take your beaters and mix it. And this is a little secret ingredient. <clears throat> My family really didn't care for a pumpkin pie, but we did use a pumpkin pie spice, just a little bit to add to it. That's what I'm doing. Mixing it again, just a little bit, so everything is well incorporated. Now it's time to pour your batter into your pie shell. And don't overcrowd your pie shell. Don't, what I mean by that, don't fill it up to the brim because it is going to rise a little bit. Level it out. And like I said, this recipe will yield you two full pies. All right, it's ready to put in the oven on 400. Bake for an hour and you get these beautiful pies. Let's see what it tastes like because I know y'all want to see me taste it, right? All right, guys. That was a little bit of a challenge because I was just going on what I remember, which wasn't much because I said I was not in the kitchen always with my mom and she didn't write the recipe down. So I'm going to taste it in front of you guys. And I'm just getting a little bit with my morning coffee. I enjoy eating sweet potato pie the next day so that the seasoning can marinate overnight. And I like it lightly warm. All right. Let's go.
It's good. Mm. But you know what? It's not quite my mom's. It's not as sweet as my mom's. So I'm thinking, and knowing my mom, she probably used two cups of sugar, which is a lot. I can't necessarily say I'm going to try that recipe again with that much sugar because my doctor wouldn't be too happy about it. I might, and maybe just to get a one slice, I might try it with more sugar. It's smooth. There are no lumps. And I know there's a big debate about baking your sweet potatoes. I never saw my mom bake hers. When I was real young, I remember she would boil them whole with the skin on. And she would let me mix it for her. And I would have to get the strings off the beater. But then as I got older, I saw her peel them beforehand and she sliced them long way, which is what you saw me do. So that's a matter of preference. Um, I'm almost certain it would probably have a richer taste of sweet potato. Although it tastes like sweet potato right now, it's good. But you would probably get more flavor if you cook them in the skin. So I might try that. Overall, I'm glad you joined me. Come back. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, and comment. Peace.